What is up, design family, and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. As always, so glad to have you lovely folks back on the channel. On today's episode, we will be looking at and evaluating athleisure. What is athleisure? What constituents brought the rise of athleisure? We'll look at the history of athleisure, dating all the way back to the 1970s. We'll look at how we as designers can actually bring a beautiful sense of athleisure to the designs that we create, the collections that we bring to the world, and ultimately push the section forward. That way, our customers are getting what they want, and we're continuing to create clothing that everyone can benefit from. And then we'll look at what the future of athleisure sports room may be, and then we'll round up with understanding how you today can go into your next collection with the knowledge needed to stand out from the crowd to create athleisure that is not only functional, but beautiful and also enhances your customers day to day. So if you guys are interested in how to design, how to think about, how to create and understand the foundations of athleisure, well, you guys are in luck because this is the episode for you. Welcome to Fit Design TV. Are you interested in sports fashion, design and manufacturing? Are you establishing your own brand? You're looking good. Anthony, how are we doing? Do you want to? Thank you. Well, you've come to the right place. Lights, camera, action. So let's get right into the episode. What is athleisure? What is this word? Athlete, leisure, athletic wear, leisure. The core constituents of these two words, athletic wear and leisure, give us a sense, an idea of what athleisure wear is. What it is, is it's clothing that is designed with a fashion focused intent for people who wish to build and to live a healthy lifestyle, both mentally and physically. The type of person that intends on living a life like this has specific demands of their clothing. They must not only be functional, but they should also be versatile and beautiful. This is where the core of athleisure comes into play. It's the blending of fashion, and fitness together. In 2023, we see this blend of fashion and fitness now more than ever with high-end designers bringing in core constituents, core components of athletic wear into their casual clothing. There's a blending of these two categories together. Whereas before sportswear was that tank top, that jogger, that jacket you'd only wear in the gym for a jog or whenever performing a physical activity, athleisure now has blended the best parts of both of these worlds. It's created something that you can live your day to day in. You can have a versatility to, you can speak to who you wish to be to show the world that I'm someone who takes care of their fitness, their health, I take this stuff seriously and I have clothing that demands the same of me. And this is further reinforced with the designers that we see, the high-end designers that are also beginning to bring in these elements into their core runways, their core collections. Also, COVID-19 pushed athleisure forward. As people had the chance to stay at home and were forced to stay at home, what we noticed with the pandemic was ultimately we demanded clothing that was comfortable, a versatile, but also did not make us feel like slops. That we felt also a sense of refinement, of polish in, which again is the blending of that comfiness, that functionality, that softness of sportswear, that flexibility of sportswear, and the refined aesthetic of more fashion forward aesthetic and items. What are some core designs? What are some core products that we see on a day-to-day -day basis that constitute athleisure? You have your sports bras, you have your leggings, you have your windbreakers, you have your jackets, you have all of these garments that now have made their way into the cultural zeitgeist. This is a piece of athleisure where it's no longer only dedicated and reserved for the gym. It's a piece of clothing that can have the versatility to span all requirements of a person's day-to-day -day life whether it's commuting on the train, whether it's going to catch up with friends for a coffee, whether it's going to the gym, whether it's going for a cycling class, whether it's going for a yoga class, you have the ability to do so much in the same category of clothing. This is the first time that we see such a versatility in a niche of clothing. This is honestly why athleisure wear, why sportswear is going to continue to ameliorate, to continue to grow, continue to have the influence that we've seen it have over the last 10 years and scale into the next level. Now that we've looked at what athleisure is, let's look at where it's been, what is the history of athleisure, that way we know where it might need to go. Athleisure essentially gets its start in the early 1970s. In the 1970s, there's a complete boom, there's a craze in the fitness industry as more and more people start to take to the gyms, start to take to local fitness centers to improve their health and their fitness. At this stage, clothing becomes much more functional. We see the invention and the mass introduction of Lycra, of spandex into the market, allowing garments to stretch, allowing you to move and to conform with the body, allowing us 
as wearers to benefit from skin tight clothing that has a functionality and has an appeal to it. At this stage, clothing is purely functional. You see a lot of understated designs, very primitive designs, very just gym specific designs that are only meant to be used in your health and fitness activities. In the 1990s, we see a massive cultural shift based off of the hip hop movement as hip hop becomes more and more introduced into the mainstream, it obviously has an influence on fashion. We see a more casual take on fashion. We see the introduction of sneakers into people's colloquial, into their local dresswear. We see tracksuits. We see all of these garments that have a little bit of a sportswear undertone. Now, for the first time, being used outside of the gym, being used in music videos, being used on tour, seen on the streets, seen on commutes. These clothing, this type of clothing becomes accepted as daily casual wear outside of just being used specifically in the gym. And in the early 2000s, as we continue to see the mass acceptance of more casual sportswear, tracksuits, t-shirts into what people are wearing day to day, large companies like Nike, Adidas jump on this trend. They capitalize from this. They take these categories, these segments, and they scale them up. They realize for the first time that their clothing that they design and they create not only have the opportunity to be used in the gym, but can also be used in a variety of different scenarios. And this leads to the opening up of massive opportunities. We start to see more vibrant designs, designs with more expression, a wider variety of fabrics, more cuts, more functionalities being brought into the garments, into the tracksuits, into the leggings, into the bras, all of the things that we would traditionally be used and seem to be used in the gym now have this other side to them that they can completely be used and benefited from in. This mass acceptance of sportswear and athleisure is also further reinforced by celebrities. Celebrities like Kanye West ultimately end up bringing into their wardrobes, into their statements, into their tours, these much more casual, much more street and sportswear oriented fits that again, reinforce the idea that streetwear and sportswear are one and fashion and sportswear are also one. This is not, they're not mutually exclusive. You no longer have to pick and choose between being comfortable in casual sportswear and being fashionable in more high-end clothing. Leading up all the way to today, we see athleisure completely taking off and you have a wide range of athleisure. You have athleisure at the highest end of luxury where the most premium materials, the most high-end finishes, the most high, large profile people are wearing athleisure in their day-to-day, -day, being photographed in their day-to-day -day in these garments, in these pieces, all the way down to the entry-level sportswear, the athleisure wear that can be worn by the average person that is a lot more understated, a lot more simple, and a lot less frizzled out. But this again shows us the flexibility, the variety, the versatility of this industry, this niche, something that other fashion niches have been unable to take on. They've been unable to transform with the times and to become something different than what they were originally created for. This is the beauty of athleisure. It has and gives designers the opportunities to make of it what they will, to bring in their own unique taste, their own unique view, but still give the customer something functional, usable, something that can benefit them on a day-to-day -day basis that they can use time and time again. Think of the regular athleisure piece versus a fast fashion piece or a regular luxury fashion piece. Think of the usability, the utility that you can get out of that one single piece of athleisure wear versus the other types of clothing that you might have. This is, and this is in part, part of why athleisure wear is so popular. You get so much use out of it. You get the bang for your buck that you just simply don't get out of other types of clothing. So how does one go about thinking about and designing, creating aesthetic, functional athleisure wear? Stuff that is not only going to be great for use by the end customer, but it's also going to allow you to bring your own unique flair your own unique brand message into the industry. I have a method that I mentioned before in separate episodes, which is the fit, fabric, and function theory. By following these three Fs, you can design a feature wear that is going to be at the top of the game. Let's look at fabric. When you design, understand that the thing that is going to perform, that's going to bring utility to your garment is going to be the fabric. If you need it to be breathable, the fabric is going to do that. If you need it to stretch with the wear, the fabric is going to do that. If you need it to be durable, to put up with the daily needs of your customers' day-to-day -day lives, the fabric is going to do that. Selecting the right fabric for the job is going to be key. If you're going for a more cozy, casual, comfy look, then perhaps a fleeced or a plush fabric of medium to heavyweight thickness is going to be in order. If you're going for a gym focused aesthetic with high vibrancy, with high contrast colors, then perhaps a nylon compression interlock fabric is going to be in order. This is the most important part of any athleisure collection is selecting the right fabrics to do the right job. The second thing is going to be your fit. Understanding your fit 
and understand your customer is going to come down to knowing where your garment is going to be used. If you're designing a daily pair of leggings, you may not want to go for something that is highly compressive because that pair of leggings is going to be worn for a prolonged period of time, not only a short workout. Then from there, you might want to also fit the garment in a way that makes sense from a length perspective. Perhaps you don't want it to be too long because it's going to be more versatile everyday legging, then you want something that can be in the middle between a capri legging and a full length legging, something that has that variety to it. it. Just adds to the versatility of the garment. Thinking about fit is a essential part because if something does not fit correctly, if your wearer doesn't get what they need out of it, if they feel uncomfortable in the scenarios that they're putting the garment in because of the fit, well, they're not going to gravitate towards it. The last thing is going to be the function. This comes back to fit and fabric. Understanding where your garment is going to be used is going to be key towards how you design not only the fit, but also the aesthetics of the design. What details you incorporate, what trims you use, what types of drawstrings you use, do you incorporate pockets, what cuts, do you bring in mesh. This comes down to looking at your customers day to day. What are they going to be using these garments for? Let's again bring the example of the daily legging. This legging, you understand which scenarios you may put that legging in. This legging will be used in the gym for light workouts. It may be used for yoga sessions. It may be used for casual lounging out at home. It may be used in the office. It may be used in a casual meetup with friends. These characteristics will lend it to, okay, I need this garment to be medium to lightweight. I will need this garment to be very soft to wear, something that doesn't irritate the skin. I need this garment to be just supported enough, but not highly compressive enough so that I feel uncomfortable with it during the day. I need this garment to have ample storage for my day-to-day -day things, my keys, my wallet, all these things. I need this garment to be understated in this design. Why do I need it to be understated? Not too many cuts, not too much color contrast. Well, because I want it to be versatile. I want to be able to put a pair of jeans over it maybe. Maybe I want to wear a jacket with it. Maybe I want to blend it with a hoodie. I need to have the ability to mix and match this garment without having to think too much about changing out my legging completely. So this comes down to the function of the garment. So where does this leave us? What is the future of both sportswear and athleisure wear? No one can predict for sure. But as someone who's been in the industry for the last nine years, this is where I personally see things heading. Number one is I believe that there's going to be a heavy reliance on augmented reality for us to engage and to interact with the clothing that we see, both on retailers' websites and also how we design and how we actually create and prototype our clothing. You see a lot of high-end companies, Marvelous Designer Clo, creating these augmented reality solutions that allow you to visualize your garment in 3D on the websites for the customers to be able to get the best possible understanding of how the garment fits. We're also going to see a more clear way to create sustainable sports wear, sustainable athleisure wear in all areas. Of course, we've made tremendous strides into sustainable clothing. We're picking the right fabrics. We're being more selective about creating garments of higher quality and not fast fashion pieces that are going to be thrown out after one or two wears. We're also going to see packaging being done in a way that is completely recycled. We're going to see companies have a more strong initiative towards social causes to make sure that their companies are making an impact, not only in terms of the revenue that they create, but also in the social impacts and the social causes that they benefit. We're also going to see athleisure take on a wide variety of different scenarios. I've mentioned this briefly before, but because of the versatility of athleisure, we're going to see it segment or to splinter into different industries, different sub niches, because each designer, or each clique of designers are able to cultivate and to create an aesthetic. We're going to have the ability to micro niche this larger niche. And what we're seeing in this is you have your companies that create more streetwear oriented athleisure. We have companies that create more high-end luxury focused athleisure. We have companies that create more body shaping, more contour shaping athleisure wear. And this is just the testament of how versatile the industry is and how we're also going to be able to see depth into each of these different sub niches as companies continue to make large strides in how they improve, how they design and the materials they bring in and the technologies they incorporate to create better and better products. Well guys, that is it. That is a wrap on this episode. That's been my overview of what athleisure wear is, what's the history of athleisure wear, how we can think about designing athleisure and ultimately where athleisure may be heading. That way you can see ahead and you can pick and choose 
how you want to deal with the future of this industry that you may happen to love. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please consider smashing a massive thumbs up. Let me know which other episodes you want to see in the future. Also, if you have any questions about how your company can have a role in the future of athleisure and you want to speak with me one-on-one, -on -one, I offer limited consultation slots every single week. You can check the link in the description and you can book that call with me. I'll be more than happy to speak with you and to see how I can help you. Guys, from the very bottom of my heart, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, stay awesome.